Okay, okay, the recording is on, and we're going to take a moment to uh, pray together. Can somebody just lead us in prayer, please, and we will get started. Thomas, please. Sure, Pastor. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We praise you, bless you, Daddy, for this wonderful time. As we sit in the classroom, we learn how to use the human technology in the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you for the technologies. Where the world using in a different way, help us to use in the right way to bless people and to enlarge your kingdom and preach the gospel of Lord. We thank you, we praise you for this wonderful time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, good morning, everyone, to our course here on uh, Media and Technology Ministry. This will be our final lecture for this course. Um, today, I'll just share a few more things with you, uh, and then I will give you, next week, I will put out this final, the notes for this final lecture. Basically, uh, I will list out all the software systems that I have shared with you. Um, yeah, just give you a short a list of these things so that uh, you keep it with you. And um, then um, whenever you need to use it, you could use it in the future. So today I'm going to talk about a couple of three things, actually. One is about inventory management. So, you know, as a church, as a ministry, you will be buying different things, uh, Example, you may be buying a drum kit, you may be buying musical equipment, you may be buying computers, and you may be buying lots and lots of things, you know. Um, so, um, of course, in, in initially, you, you can maybe have an Excel sheet and you can track, you know, what did you buy, uh, when did you buy it, who's using it, because, you know, different people are using it. But then after some time, it gets a little too much just to track everything in Excel sheet. So, um, it is useful to have a software system to track your inventory. That means, you know, all the different things that you have bought as an organization. You know, so uh, an example is suppose you have 50 people working in your organization, you know, and you're giving everybody a laptop to use. That means you have 50 laptops and, uh, and uh, you know, it's all the different people, and then there are people who join and people who leave, and uh, and then then you you have uh, equipment, and if you have many locations, you have equipment in different locations, and uh, you have so different uh, projectors and musical equipments and all that. So how you know how do you track everything? You don't want anything to go missing or be lost, and that's where uh, what we refer to as a inventory management or an asset management system uh, is useful. So uh, that is what we also use. Uh, so I want to sh talk to you about that. i just show you that. Uh, then our, the next thing is about analytics. That is to look at the data of how, you know, various things are happening. Uh, so that's also important because uh, 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 when you have data, then you can do analysis. You can, you know, you can get some information, you know, maybe on data about your websites, how people are coming in, how people are accessing your websites and so on, or data about your attendance, you know, uh, uh, people are attending church. Now, we, we, we used to use uh, an online system, which I will share with you. Uh, but now we also track it on a, on a weekly basis. You know, we have a system internally uh, as well. But I'll just share with you, so just just so that you can use it if you want to, um, where you know you, you you track your attendance and then you begin to analyze, you know, why are people coming to church? Why are people stopping uh, from coming to church? But if you have the data, uh, you can analyze it. Now, um, so that's the second thing I want to talk a little bit about data analysis or making use of data to understand, you know, how the organization or the ministry is doing. And uh, then you can make some decisions, you know, uh, what is working, what is not working, where should you change, etc. And then lastly, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the data protection, privacy and data protection, which is, 
uh, keeping people's information very confidential. I just want to share a, a few thoughts on that. Okay, so these three things which we will cover today with this, our course will be over. What I will do next week is give you like a one or two page document that that has all these systems that I shared with you about. And then I'll give you a small exercise to do uh, just to review and as a kind of like an exam just to evaluate, you know, so that we have to give give some marks for this course. So, uh, you know, it'll, it's all open book exam, nothing to worry about, but some exercise for you to do so that we can uh, give an assessment on uh, for this course. Okay, uh, but don't worry too much about the assessment. It's, uh, you know, so it's more of, uh, I really wanted you to be exposed to various things that are there so that when you want, uh, you can use it. And then if you have the notes, you know, you can always go back and refer and say, hey, uh, I need to use that for this purpose. So you can always do that. And maybe, you know, uh, uh, things also change. So maybe there'll be new systems available, you know, a, couple, in a few months from now, six months from now, a year from now. So you may be able to use some better products uh, in in time to come. But at least you have an idea that something like this is there and I can use it. So let me just share these things with you and uh, before we close today. So the first thing I want to share with you about is uh, what is called as asset management, nothing complicated, just, just for you to know. So we have what, you know, we have this thing, uh, system. Uh, it's again, an open source free product. Um, uh, it's called our inventory management. Uh, and uh, uh, what we do is uh, uh, anytime uh, we buy a computer or we buy any hardware, we, we enter it into the system, right? Uh, we, and uh, so we know that, uh, I'm just showing you laptops now. So, uh, uh, so here, I think there are about 32 laptops. Uh, so we know who has which laptop, right? Uh, so we record the serial number and who's got it, uh, you know, and uh, who's using it. And uh, here's a, who's, who's having that laptop. And uh, when it comes back to us, we uh, put it here. So this is this laptop and other things as well, yeah, uh, that you have. So um, because the numbers are increasing, you know, that means we have many more devices. Uh, it becomes a little difficult for us to uh, record all these in a in a spreadsheet. So we use a system like this, right? Um, so you could also have uh, uh, software licenses. So again, you know, we, we have to buy license for different software that we use. So, uh, you know, so we have the license software licenses also available. Uh, other things that that as and when we buy it, we enter it in the system. Uh, we can track who has it and so on. So uh, I'm just giving you an idea that uh, if you want to um, make use of a uh, asset man management or inventory management, you can track your hardware, your licenses, software licenses, and other things that you buy. Uh, you can track it here and then, uh, and uh, you know, so you know who has what, where it is, and so on. Okay, so this is one thing for you to keep in mind and make use of, okay? Uh, and again, this product, this is uh, and, uh, uh, a free open source product. I will give you the details in, in the, uh, in the, in the document that you could use this asset management portal or system uh, and you can track, you know, so you think about it, especially as you're buying a lot of products. So now we have the, the process we have is every time we buy something uh, before we start using it, that in, the information about that product has to be entered into the system and who is going to be responsible for it. So if you buy a laptop, okay, this laptop is going to be given to person A, B, and C, a person so-and-so. Uh, that's a serial number of the laptop that was cost when it was purchased, and it's been given to this person. So that person has it. Now, when that, if that person is leaving the organization, that person has to return the laptop. 
then it's taken off their their name is taken off it and maybe it's given to some you know it's cleaned up and given to somebody else to use so that's how it is and we can track you know who has that laptop or like that we have uh, so many other so many other, other equipment that has to be managed and tracked okay so that's asset management simple but also important uh, when 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 uh, your organization is buying your church is buying lots of things you need to record the second thing the, the next part that i wanted to talk about was analytics so uh, uh, that means uh, let me see here. I think it's church, um, church metrics. That means um, uh, right. Uh, that means you want to you want to um, record, you know, how your church is doing. Right. That means uh, you know what is your attendance and so on. So you have this website, this, again, this is online called churchmetrics.com. So it's a very useful thing. Of course, you have to feed in the data. Now we used to use it. We used to put our data in so you can see or some old data. So if you go to church metrics, you set up an account here, you can sign up, right? Uh, and uh, You can just enter your data or you have somebody in your, in your, um, organization enter your data you can set up how you want what data you want so we you know we had this set up for um, location wise and then you can report data over here you know how many people are watching here uh, how many uh, who are attending and so on now we haven't been at, uh, uh, entering data here uh, but you could do that. Let me just go back in time. Um, and we all want that. Well, you could enter. You can enter your data here. And uh, I want to be able to look at all data. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we haven't been uh, updating data here because we, we kind of moved to a, or another another way of recording our data. But uh, I just wanted to talk about this, uh, let you know that this is there. So this is online. So that means you, know, you don't have to do any setup. You just have to go to church metrics and you start entering your data on a weekly basis. You know, and then what happens is over time, you'll be able to see your data. What is your attendance for this year? Kids, first time visitors, you can set up the data however you want it and uh, report, report on it. Now, we we are not, at the moment, not you know uh, using it. We are reporting our data in on a weekly basis. Uh, we have somebody in the church office who puts all the data in an Excel sheet and reports to us. And we also, that means they tell us, you know, uh, for this location, uh, how many were in attendance, how many, first time visitors. Uh, we also have detail on how did the first time visitor come to church? Were they invited by a family member? Uh, were they invited by a friend? Uh, were they invited because, I mean, did they see us, find us online and then come to church, right? So we track that data. Then in addition to that, uh, we also, uh, when we do a follow-up on our first-time visitors, uh, we have another report that comes in saying, okay, um, you know, uh, uh, and these are the people who will, uh, who are interested in connecting to the church. And these are people, maybe they were visiting because, you know, they came from out of town. Uh, maybe they, they came just for a special event, but they already are part of another church in our city. So we, you know, we, we leave those people out uh, because we don't want to disturb what, where they are. But those are interested. There is a follow-up process that happens. So uh, the point I want to say is, if you record your data, and one option is to record it here in this website, churchmetrics.com, you can set up a free account and you can record this and you can, you know, follow, follow your data. That's one uh, way of doing it. Or another way of doing it is 
you know, have your own system internally, which is what we have right now. Uh, you have your own internal system of how you look at, uh, tabulate this data. And then you can analyze. You can, you can ask some questions. You know, why are people coming back to church? Uh, what are the reasons they're coming back? Or how are people coming to church? And very interesting that uh, while, you know, it is still true that a number of people are coming because they were invited by a friend, also ob ob observing that a, a good number of people are finding us online and then coming to church, which is telling us that when people move into the city, they, they will search online for a church, you know, close to where they are. And then they will go to that location. You know, of course, I'm sure they will do their homework and they will... Uh, search and so on, and then they then come to church. So we we have that information, so it gives us an idea that uh, these are the reasons why people are coming to church. Then, what is it causing them to stay with the church? Again, that is data that information that's useful for us. Okay, uh, and and you can track that data. You can set it up here if you want in this system and track it. Uh, we are not doing it with this system, but you can if you want to, right? Where you can say, what are the reasons people are coming back to church? Maybe they like the worship. Maybe they uh, they like the ministry of the word. Maybe they like the fellowship, the community, you know, or maybe they want to volunteer. They, they like the opportunities to serve, you know? So people have different reasons. And, and if you track that, it tells you that, Mm, these are things you're doing good. Or maybe they felt very welcomed the first time they came, right? Uh, and so that's why they're coming back. So the point is, if you and I, uh, if we in our churches, you know, we track the data, then we can analyze the data and we can see what we're doing right and uh, what we're doing wrong or what we're missing out on. And there are thereby we can... Uh, uh, make changes for ourselves uh, in in terms of you know what what should I do differently uh, what should I what should I uh, you know what should I be doing and uh, and so on okay so uh, churchmetrics.com gives you the opportunity to set up things the way you want it um, uh, let me I, well, let me just share this again with you. Oh, sorry, my screen share. Mm. Go to church metrics. Okay, so church metrics under the admin uh, console and 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 the admin section, you can set up what you want over here, right? You can set up various events. Uh, you can set up your categories. You know, what do you want to track? Um, you can set up uh, your service timings, who are the users, um, and you can have your records over here over time. Um, and uh, have a look at, you know, your campuses, your regions, your organizations. So it, it lets you set it up, and then you can import your data and uh, and you know, look look at your data. So I think if uh, if I go back in time, uh, I should be able to pull up some old data. Um, and let me just report on some old data. Oh, it's still, uh, it's only showing this year. Um, okay, attendance. Let me just uh, 
Okay. So, you know, of course, during the COVID lockdown and so on, and there were various things happening. Uh, these, uh, so we're looking at the attendance over 2013 to 2020, all the way to 2022. Uh, no, no data was entered for quite a long time uh, in, these, in, in this part. Uh, this, you know, must have been a combined service uh, attendance. So that's why it's a spike there. But generally what's happened is um, it's been hovering over uh, this blue line is the attendance at Central. It's kind of hovering over 500 people or so, you know, over time. And then these are the other locations. So you can see, you know, okay, it's been pretty much steady. And of course, yeah, this is during the COVID period. We uh, didn't take in any data. Uh, now we need to, uh, we didn't put in any data since then. All right. So, um, we so you know this gives you an idea okay we're around this pretty much this average attendance uh for central and uh, and these are other locations that we see here and so on uh so i'm just giving you an example where you can you know you can look at data um there are of course ups and downs because of uh, special events or things like that but it's pretty much around 500 central right so you can do you know you can look at data over time and uh, 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 do some analysis so this is one part of it now uh, a lot of the other other analysis actually which i described to you or mentioned to you happens it doesn't happen through the system it happens through another process that we have in the church office but and that is important, right? That you try to understand, you know, what is happening in the church and how we can uh, make use of that data. Okay. Now, uh, another part of the analysis I'll just quickly show you, which is maybe not, um, this, this is one side, which is having to do with attendance, why people are coming, um, uh, how are we following up with people, uh, what are the reasons people like to stay in church, um, which, you know, is useful for you to ask questions and look at it. And therefore, you know, you decide what can we do better, how can we improve and so on. So that's one thing. The other uh, analysis that uh, you can do, use is, um, uh, is on what you're doing online, that is with your websites and what is happening. So for this, again, there's another web product that we use. It's again, a free product. Uh, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you the details. It's, um, and with this product, it's called Matomo, um, free web product. With this, uh, on this site, um, uh, what, what you can do is, of course, you register all your websites over here, right? So we have our websites here. We've we're looking at apc.org and this tracks people i mean visitors who are coming to your site over or every visitor who's coming in and so you can you know it gives you some idea of uh, who is coming to your website from which part of the world right so uh, this is in the last 24 hours uh, in the last 24 hours there were 300 uh, visitors. Last 30 minutes, there were seven people. So this map, if you look in the last 24 hours, uh, we had people, uh, about 246 unique visitors who came to APC website from different parts of the world. Uh, there were visitors from India. There was one person from Russia, Australia, Malaysia, uh, South Africa, this is Nigeria, Ghana, what is that, Spain, UK, Italy, Ethiopia, Kenya, and this is uh, UAE. Yeah, so, you know, it kind of gives you an idea. Look, these are people, in the last 24 hours, we've had people from these countries come and visit. Now, of course, uh, it also tracks, you know, what their actions are. 
uh, you can get into those details here, you know, what did they download and so on. But at a high level, you can see, um, uh, you know, if you want to look um, uh, 2021, just if I want to do over the year, okay? So if I want to say, you know, what happened last year uh, till 2021, uh, that's March 21st. So in one year period, uh, what did we see happen in, uh, in apcwo.org? So we are saying, yeah, uh, you know, this, this is giving us all the details here, all the downloads and so on. But let's see what, what this map is telling us. So this map is telling us that in 2021, uh, we had about uh, 150,000 visits, 152,000 visits. And we had people from all these countries come to use uh, apcw.org website. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's almost uh, covering every country in the world, uh, except for there's no visit from Greenland and there may be some, this one, Turkmenistan and Latvia, Lit Lithuania and Latvia. Nobody came from there. And Iceland, no visit. And who is this? Cuba. No, is it? Yeah. So, but otherwise, we've had at least some visitors from different parts of the world. You can see here, you know. So it gives you an idea and saying, okay, people have been visiting uh, uh, this website and they've been making use of it and so on. So this analytics is, is useful. And then also you can get into, okay, what, what have people downloaded uh, from uh, the website? You know, so you, so we could do the same thing for um, other websites that we run. So when we look at, um, I'm just I'll just do one more, and then I don't want to bore you with this thing. But uh, you know, we could say, all right, what happened last year, 2021, for our um, Bible College website? So this is a different website. This is Bible College. Now, what happened here? So. Um, uh, for our Bible College website, we are looking at, uh, okay, of course, it's not as many. It's only about 20,000 people. Uh, we've we had people from, yeah, good number of countries, but there are several countries that were left that didn't come uh, to the Bible College website. But otherwise, um, we did have visitors from different parts of the world no, and North Korea, no visit. So it gives us so uh, analytics, you know, uh, recognizing what is happening with your websites and you know what is the reach and what what are people downloading and so on, is something that's useful. Okay, so once again, this is another product called Matmo uh, that that will tell you um, that will track what's happening, and if you have uh, somebody set it up for you, you can know what is useful. Okay. So the point I want to get across is that uh, it is good to collect data, uh, whether it's your church attendance uh, or visitors to your website, and then it is good to analyze the data. You can do a lot of things. You know, for example, we we look at downloads. So are people downloading the resources that we are making available in our website? Because it's one thing to put something on your website, but you know how are people using it? Is it being used? So we have the data, we can look at it, and then we can say, okay, yeah, people, you know, these these books are being downloaded, or these sermons are being downloaded. On a weekly average, we can see that, you know, uh, 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 so many people are listening to our audio sermons, so many people are watching the YouTube, the the, the videos. Uh, uh, so many people are downloading sermon notes. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, uh, you know what I what I notice is on Saturdays the download of the sermon notes will increase. Uh, on Saturday, every Saturday, there's a spike. 
That's very interesting, which means that, you know, uh, obviously pastors, preachers, others are used to coming to our church website uh, to make use of our sermon notes. Uh, on Sa- and they probably take it on a Saturday to help prepare them, uh, prepare for messages on Sunday. It's very interesting. Every Saturday there'll be a spike in our downloads of uh, sermon notes and sermons. So it's a good thing. Uh, you know, that means others are making use of it to help in their preparation for uh, uh, their Sunday sermons. So like that, you know, you can observe these things happening online. And, uh, you know, so you know that all your effort is is not in vain. It's somebody is using it. Okay. So first thing I shared today was inventory management to track all your church inventory, ministry inventory. Secondly, I just shared a little bit about data. Uh, that if you record your data, you can do analysis, you can ask questions, uh, you can see what is happening uh, with the work that you are doing. The last thing I want to talk about is data privacy and protection. So in all the things, all the systems, soft systems that we shared, part of it has to do with collecting uh, 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 I see Thomas's comment. I have seen some pastors taking sermon notes on ABC website. Yeah. So, in all of the you know the the, the software systems uh, we have said said uh, we are collecting people's information, individuals' information. So that means uh, you know, um, especially in our church management system or in our Bible college system, or we have a database of our pastors across, pastors and people from around the world and in, in India as well. So this is individual information, you know, somebody's full name, house address, email ID, phone number, birthday, anniversary date. And in some cases, we also have other information, like when they come to our Christmas counseling, counselors have other information, right? Now, all of this information has to be private. That means uh, it shouldn't just go to anybody's hands and it should be kept confidential. It should be kept secure, right? That's very important. Now, uh, so as an organization, you have responsibility of data, of people's information, right? So example is uh, within your organization, uh, you restrict access to those 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 pieces of information to people who only need to use it for certain purposes. Like for example, our member care, our pastors who are doing member care, they they need to call people, they need to wish them on their birthdays. Okay, so they will have access to that information, but they don't have access to counselor information. Counselor information only the individual counselor will have access. Even between counselors, information is not shared. Right, so. One counselor is not going to share their information to another counselor. It doesn't happen, right? So it's kept confidential. Member care for them to do calling and wishing, greeting people, sending cards and cakes and so on. But other people, other team members don't have access to it because they don't need it. They don't need to be calling people or they don't need it. So they won't have access. So like that, you have to decide who needs access to what Things have to be kept confidential. And then uh, also you don't want people to break into your system, hack into your system, right? Because it's all there online. So uh, you want to be careful. Uh, So what we nowadays we have is uh, 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 two-factor authentication. That means uh, there is the login username and password, that's one level authentication. The passwords are always very complicated, many times 16 characters or whatever. Uh, but then there is also the phone, you know, you have to authenticate on your phone. So we use a Google authenticator and you have to enter the code. Only then uh, uh, you will be able to log in. So we set up two-factor authentication uh, among the people who are going to use wherever possible, right? Oh. So that's another level. So not only do you need to know username and password, you also need to enter 
you have to authenticate with the code that comes to your phone, the individual's phone. So if a person doesn't have the phone, you can't log in, right? So that's two factor on authentication to protect information, to protect access to the systems that we have. So uh, you have to think about these things. Um, now you don't have to do it yourself. You tell your people who are doing the IT system for you, say, hey, I want to keep all my data secure. I want to make sure all church data, church financial data, church individual data is all secure and wherever possible set up two-factor authentication so that um, uh, you know, even by chance, even if somebody gets to know the username and password, they still cannot log in because they have to have an additional level, which is the, the code that, that only is available on uh, the individual's phone. Uh, only then they can log in, right? So you set up two-factor authentication for uh, all such systems, okay? So that pretty much covers different software systems that uh, you could use um, for your church or for your ministry. Uh, they, they will be a lot more, and I'm sure in the future, you know, there will be a lot more software systems that come out which will be useful for the church and ministry, but I just wanted to give you an overview of things and give, I'll give you the, the information in the document. Keep it as a handy reference and in the future, uh, whenever your church or your organization needs something, you can, if you want to, you can make use of some of the things that we are using at APC or you, you, know, you may find better products uh, in, in, the, in the future uh, that you can use, okay? Um, any questions, anything before we close today? Any questions? Okay, so um, no questions. Um, so with this, we will conclude this course on media and technology in ministry. Uh, what is left is I will give you this final sheet with the list of all the software systems I spoke to you about and just showed it to you online. I'll give you a sheet with that. Then I will put out the assessment exercise or assessment, uh, which will be just one assessment, 100 marks, um, just you know, uh, asking some basic questions, not in, no technical questions, just some overview questions of uh, things we have covered uh, it's more for more to give us a uh, I'll give you a mark or a number uh, so that uh, we can say that you know you did this course and that you finished the course. So we will give that single assessment, only one assessment, hundred marks, uh, and you're done with it. So please um, uh, look out for that assessment. Uh, and of course, you know the semester ends end of April, so you you have one month uh, still uh, to do that okay and no hurry uh, you'll be able to finish it so with this we conclude uh, this course on uh, media and technology i hope you found it useful and uh, in the future of course if you need any help just send us an email uh, and uh, uh, you know to whatever extent uh, we are able to we can uh, advise you or share information with you on uh, what what you could use for your ministry. Okay. Thank you, everyone. We're going to close in prayer. And uh, uh, I will ask, uh, request somebody to please pray and uh, we will dismiss. Who will pray? All right, Prince, you want to pray? I think your mic is okay. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Thank you, Father. Thank you that we give glory. And this time, Lord, uh, you are uh, you with us? And we believe that you are working in our heart, Lord. Thank you. Just uh, as we uh gone through this uh subject entire the course lord thank you for you are with 
that you are with us and you help us to learn and this subject what we look forward that you are working so we can uh, apply in our ministry lord thank you mm -hmm. pray and also i pray for pastor he teaches so well lord. thank you for that and give glory to you lord everything whatever we do only for your glory lord thank you mm -hmm. as i met i also all the student and so we we more can uh, useful in your ministry lord thank you i submit all things to you in jesus name i pray amen amen thank you everyone uh, enjoy the rest of the day enjoy your weekend and we'll see you next week god bless each of you bye now so thank you thank you